Hi, in this slide I want to talk about uh, sort of four main pathways or options for dealing with the whole tail minnow uh, problem or opportunity. Uh, assuming that your core business is that 20% of the customers who really are 80% of the volume purchasing and they are big enough to support traditional outside sales coverage of some sort and I've done <clears throat> um, uh, clips in the past where in Nichonomics, the playlist number four, where uh, I, I could build a case that if a, if a customer can't already or very quickly be doing $4,800 a year in margin dollars, they can't really support a, a viable outside sales relationship. Um, and most distributors would say, well, that's f creepy because 70% of all the accounts that, that I have assigned to a salespeople are actually below the threshold. But at any rate, let's assume that we're going after the big guys. We still want to use reps in some fashion to do that. But going forward, we're instead of having one size fits all uh, standard kind of service, we're going to have nicheonomic service. And with, with line item profit analytics, we can actually do uh, very specific precision supply chain solutions. So assuming that, what do we do with the minnows? Well, first of all, we could just say, well, hey, let's be decisive. Let's just fire them all lay off all the related expenses. If we lay off $2 for every dollar of, 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 of fulfillment activity costs for every dollar we lose in margin, we're going to double, triple our, our bottom line. That's going to be great, and we can get on with the 2080 renewal uh, program a lot faster. Uh, now, when would you do this? Um, typically, it's not going to happen unless you have an experienced outside turnaround artist jumping into, frankly, a very sick company and the company's been bought with debt. So we really got a lot of, 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 of reasons to solve this problem very quickly and, and, and generate free cash flow. The big negative of this kind of a rapid approach is because the whole uh, culture of the place has been, you know, all customers are good and you know, all our costs are fixed and therefore every margin dollar is good because every incremental margin dollar is more of it's going to flow to the bottom line. It's just going to freak people out. It also can upset the community of customers you're calling on, particularly in a contractor world. If you are very aggressive and therefore, quote, mean-spirited against little contractors, they all belong to the contractor association, and they're going to complain to their big contractor buddies who are going to say, well, wait a minute, I was little once too, and, you know, I don't really think this is very, very kind or nice. Um, and, and the answer to that problem is when the big contractor comes to you and complains, you say, well, look, here's the math of it all. And actually, we charge you more money than we really should because we have to make more peak internal profits to then pay for cross-subsidize these losers. And then they'll say very quietly, well, don't tell anybody I told you this, but you know what? Stick it to them. <laughs> In other words, I'm, oh, I didn't realize, uh, you know, I, the big guy, was cross-subsidizing these fellows, and I, the big guy, was a beneficiary of a subsidized existence growing up. Now that I'm big, I don't need to subsidize other little people growing up. Um, but, of course, the big positives are that right away profits improve, free, cra free cash flow flows up immediately, and we can get to work on the 2080 renewal uh, thing. Second option is sort of the slow and steady place, more profitable harvesting. You create a new vision. In the new vision, you've got uh, you've got repricing, reterms. Uh, you figure out how much telelove you're going to give. So by using emails and fax uh, faxgrams and and you know we'll call you every quarter, see how you're doing, make sure you're still there, our contact information is correct. Um, We'll say, look, for guys like you, you're buying these eight items, but these are 25 other items that people like you typically buy. If you bought more of these items, it would be easier for you to meet your minimum order or get your order so big that you actually qualify for free freight. Um, and the goal basically is to get people to order half as often, twice as much, and then to get an order three times as much because they're buying some more items from you. And since the prices are a little bit higher and the terms are tighter and freight's unbundled, they become profitable. Now, to inform the customers that there is a new uh, way of taking care of them afoot, we'll have to send them the letter. And you can either say, well, gee, I don't want to jump in the river with both feet. Let's just put our little toe in and we'll send out, you know, 20 letters to people and we'll even call them up and say, did you get the letter? What concerns do you have? Problems? Here's how we can work with you. I mean, just get some quick feedback. And everyone I know that's tried that said, you know, forget it. Just send everybody the letter. <laughs> but, but anyway, if you want to, that, that, you know, that helps with emotional comfort zoning of the whole process. 
Uh, and it also allows you to sort of experiment very cheaply and sort of fail forward and get some real information. It allows you to start to track your transaction per day and track the relationship of, of his gross margin dollar per transaction for this group of people starting to grow because they're ordering half as often twice as much. Uh, to try to qualify for free freight or uh, to meet the minimums that, that we impose. Um, no matter how you do it, uh, depending on the marketplace, uh, you might find about 20% disappear quickly. And that's only because there is some other fool in town who's a full service distributor who's happy to take care of little guys. And they've, and these people traditionally have bought from them, you know, randomly. If you don't have something, they may call the other guy type of thing. 30% may leave more slowly because they just start to say, you know, for what they're, what we're paying for these guys, you know, plus the freight, and the freight's pretty expensive, we can actually just go down and pick this stuff up in Joe's uh, pickup truck or Susie's van, uh, you know, on a whatever basis at the Costco Club because of the way they drive home, they're close to it. You know, they, the little companies find bottom-up ways to sort of save a buck here or there. But the rest, you know, they may moan and groan and threaten to leave or whatever, but they basically will double their sales, triple their order size. They may pay uh, freight on top of that. They're paying higher prices on top of that. You put in much more stringent credit code. It's sort of like if you're slow play, you know, you're cut off until you can prove you're innocent type of thing. And they, they become profitable. Uh, and what's interesting is the, the whole group may drop in half, but the sales and margin dollars, the sales for the whole group stays about the same because they're buying more from you. The margin dollars actually go up, the margin percent goes up quite a bit, and the margin dollar per transaction goes up quite a bit. Um, now, how are you going to grow this division? Um, and I think without proactive customer expansion, it'll fade away. And ideally, a, a wholetailer like a fastenal store has a visible place on a commercial highway and so they they pick up all sorts of random consumers and do-it-yourself hobby people and uh, moonlight repair you know kind of folks etc in addition to a, sort of the traditional small contractor um, so you know a good half the universe that you could be selling with this model you're not even approaching they don't know about you do you really want to go out after that and that brings up the third option which is oh well, what if we spin out a wholesale store? We actually find a location, you know, three, four, five blocks from our warehouse district where it's on a commercial highway next to a fastenal even. And um, so that help th those will help you find those locations. Just go find the fastenal place and say, let's look in this neighborhood type of thing. Um, but uh, I, I, I would caution you. I don't think that that's going to be what I would call a big adjacency. Here we have our core business, and is there a vector off of that? We can create sort of a new business that's got upside growth potential. Often the niche really doesn't exist for you know a lot of categories of products, or if it does exist, it's probably massively already oversaturated by the pros. I mean, if you go into Fast, only got 15 different categories of products now, up from original ones of Fasters. Home Depot's got every category you can imagine, um, uh, or the 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 if you have a business that's going pretty well, I've seen warehouses that are kind of it's too expensive a warehouse, frankly, to be in the in the pure warehouse distribution business, because uh, it's got a lot of traffic going by the the front of its you know front door or something. And so if you put a sign out there, got the store, and the store is attached, the store can actually an attached store can actually do pretty well if it's in a reasonably accessible location with traffic going, kind of going by. Um, but part of why it does so well is is the people in the store can run into the warehouse all day long and sort of get immediate. Uh, backup fulfillment. If a store is standalone to tr to replenish that store and cross dock stuff in that store, that that's another big formal step now with paperwork and a truck involved and so forth. And so it cuts down on uh, it increases the cost and it cuts down on the on the fulfillment flexibility of of the store. And then the last option is I've actually seen in some in channels where they're the kind of product that's being sold is bought by so many little people and they buy so many little orders that uh, a guy concludes, you know what, my whole business is small orders. I don't, I don't only have a couple really, a couple big key formal accounts, so what, why don't I turn my warehouse into a cash and carry place? And the warehouse is located in a place where a lot of people can easily get to it. 
And so I've seen this happen specifically in uh, floral products like get out of the flowers. We're right next to the flower exchange here in Boston. So everybody sees our signs and they can kind of come in and get a shopping cart and they can go pick stuff in our warehouse just as our warehouse people continue to pick stuff for a few key big florist you know, uh, dealers that we go after. I've seen it in food equipment. So in a restaurant, not only do you install all the kitchen and all the original stuff, but once you do that, all the pots and the pans and the ladles and the, the gizmos and the tools that the chef uses. But uh, these tend, can be random, you know, tiny, you know, I just need one more screwdriver kind of thing, and, and it creates a small order. So where is a, 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 a professional, everything a chef would want, industrial strength kind of place where people can go by, and then, of course, all the the retail consumer wannabe, you know, pro chefs can go there also. Um, and I could go on. I, in the in the food service, eat away from home market, you know, to take your little mom and pop restaurants, that's gotten too expensive to stop a big honking truck. So those people, because of minimum order plants, often may go to Costco and get stuff there. Or in very uh, dense cities, think Miami, Los Angeles, Chicago, where there also can be ethnic sort of uh, enclaves of people. You, you'll find uh, these standalone little stores that get replenished in the middle of the night uh, and they have all the faster moving uh, frozen items and, and, uh, and, and, and restaurant kind of items. Um, Smart and Final is, is uh, specialized in, in wholetailing that way. So that, uh, that's, uh, those are the four different options that we can do. Thank you.